My message today is entitled A Pure Heart, Your Road to Inner Peace. In the Bible, the heart represents something more than just a physical organ that pumps blood into our body. The heart symbolizes a seat of emotions, a place where we decide things, where we feel and where we think. The Greek word for heart in Matthew 5, 8 is kade. This can be applied to the physical heart, but it also refers to the spiritual center of life, the mind. This is where our thoughts, desires, sense of purpose, will, understanding and character reside. Matthew 15, 18 says, What comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. So what we put into our minds is portrayed in our words and actions. One of the most amazing gifts that God has given us is the human mind. The ability to think, choose and reason. While the ability to think makes us human, it actually goes deeper. Your thoughts become a reflection of who you really are. The core of who you are is shown by the thoughts or the roots of your heart. That is why what is on the inside is so much more important than what is on the outside. Matthew 12, 34 says, For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. So what we allow in our minds has a cause and effect cycle. So if there is a wrong thinking, it automatically follows that there will also be a wrong behavior. Jesus said in Matthew 5.28 that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If you see the story of King David in 2 Samuel chapter 11, you will find how his wrong thinking led him from one wrong to another. The thoughts we allow in our minds have a lot to say what actions will follow. Sadly, every Christian in the world wrestles with sin every single day of his or her life. Everyone has sinful tendencies. These tendencies are in the forms of greed, anger, lust, hatred, prejudice, and so on. People might not always act on those tendencies, but even if they don't, the tendencies are still there. Some people believe that by changing the environment, the individual will be transformed. Definitely, we should avoid places and circumstances that can make us more vulnerable to temptation. Psalms 1.1 says, Blessed is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. But did you know, our problem with sin can only be solved by the transformation of our own hearts. Christ touched the core of the issue when he stated, For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. This is where evil thoughts originate from, from our hearts. This means that our hearts need to be transformed in order for our behavior to be changed. Galatians 6, 7 and 8 says, Whatsoever a man sows, that also shall he reap. Luke 6, 45 says, A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Let me give you an example. You see a car is useful for taking us from one place to another. But when it is out of control, it is extremely dangerous and so is our mind. When used in a proper manner, it can be constructive and helpful. But when used in an evil or wrong manner, it can be destructive. What we think and what we believe 
can also affect our health our thoughts feelings and attitudes can positively or negatively affect our biological function one day someone came to me and told she was very sorry for what she had done to me she told me she had reflected on the incidents and it had troubled her and her family so much that she wanted to apologize i told her when this incident took place i was hurt but as time went by i have moved on and have forgiven her there is a growing evidence to suggest that negative emotions and thoughts may also have links to other serious health problems like heart disease therefore we encourage not to harbor ill feelings against those who hurt you you have to take steps to forgive and move on in life for your own well-being proverbs 4:23 says guard your heart above all else for everything you do flows from it another translation says guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life ellen g white stresses that the lord communicates with us through our brain the brain nerves which communicate with the entire system are the only medium through which heaven can communicate to man and affect his inmost life since god communicates with us through sensitive nerves in our brain we must see how we can protect and cultivate them in september 28 2022 a news came out in india that there was a bus and truck collision in which 7 people died and 25 were hospitalized the commissioner of that place personally took the effort to see the patients who were hospitalized while speaking to family members a woman came crying to the commissioner and complained that her son was not receiving proper treatment at the government run hospital for the past 3 days the commissioner accompanied the mother to the ward where she saw a 10 year old child lying face down on the bed crying the boy had suffered a great deal in his spinal cord the commissioner found that this local hospital did not have the facilities to treat spinal injuries and hence the boy had been referred to another hospital the commissioner gave strict guidelines to one of her staff to take responsibility for the child and not to delay his treatment any longer She asked her staff to get him checked and admitted to another hospital where he could get the treatment. She further assured the family members that they would receive support from the Red Cross Society and would not have to incur the expenses for the child's treatment as they were poor. The media praised and appreciated her compassionate service. Earlier in September 2022, In the midst of heavy rain where there was water logging issues on the roads and in many places in the houses this same commissioner when people had not woken up at 4 a.m. she was taking stock of the situation on the water filled road she was seen in the knee deep water interacting with the locals who were affected due to heavy rain in the area the commissioner supervised heavy pumping machines used to pump out water from the streets into drains one of the locals whose area was flooded with rainwater said i have seen officers sitting in their cars to listen to people's grievances and do nothing at all but over here a commissioner is not only walking through filthy water but actually executing task on ground when the media asked about her style of working the commissioner said i like being with people if there is a problem my policy is to step in and work on it if you only sit in the office you may not understand the depth of the problem if there are people who are suffering you should be with them know their problems and try to solve them only then will we understand the depth of the problem hearing so much about this commissioner 
I was curious to know about her. I did some research and to my surprise found out that she was a Christian. I'm going to read to you from one of her speeches. She says, "All of us have those foundational influences in life which define who we are as individuals, and those influences date back to our childhood. In my case, I can safely say that one of the most defining factors which shaped me as an individual was my mother and the Sunday school teacher. It is there that I started my intimate relationship with the word of God and it kind of set me on course for reading more and trying to understand God through the word. These have helped me to respond to situations in any crisis and difficulty. Constantly Jesus has put into my heart a love for people. I have experienced it always and this is the only thing that has kept me going from one day to the next. My kick in service, my thrill doesn't come from my education. It comes from the fact that I have the ability to help a person in need. And if you feel that you can actually help them, that is a big kick. That is a thrill. And that's what keeps me going. She says Wherever God has put us, we should hold our position with humility, reach out with compassion, and be ambassadors of Jesus in whatever post we are. After listening to her message, it dawned on me very clearly where she was coming from. Jesus had made a difference in her life, and the fruits of her beliefs were shown in her dealings with people she came in contact with. This true story tells us what we absorb in our minds and hearts ultimately reflects in our character in our words and in our actions that is why it is important for us to train our thoughts in the right direction Philippians 4:8 says brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure think about such things this kind of christian upbringing should be given to us right from our childhood god can give us a pure heart how many of you know what a water purifier is when you look at a water purifier what comes to mind naturally is that the water goes through a purification process to take the impurities out and that is what they advertise basically pour your impure water through our filter and it will filter out impurities and the water will be pure for human consumption the bible speaks of filtering out our impurities the pollutants that can so easily pollute our hearts when king david realized his sinful deeds he felt remorseful of his actions and repented he prayed to god to create in him a clean heart and renew a right spirit within him the same king later wrote thy word have i hid in my heart that i might not sin against thee first john 1:8 to 9 says if we claim to be without sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all our unrighteousness. God can remove those impurities from our hearts and give us a pure heart. Ezekiel 36 25 to 26 says, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you when people follow god and are born again god begins to change their hearts and minds he starts ridding them of jealousy anger pride and starts replacing these attitudes with selflessness humility love and patience ellen white says in her book the desire of ages When the spirit of God takes possession of the heart 
it transforms the life sinful thoughts are put away evil deeds are renounced love humility peace takes the place of anger envy and strife a pure heart is a heart that can be used by god not because of our own perfection but because we are willing to learn to be corrected to repent and to change by praying to god daily reading the bible applying biblical teachings to your life our hearts will be purer and better blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god